I'm going to show you how to simplify all of these rational expressions. Some of them will just require us to identify common factors in the numerator and denominator. Others will actually require us to do some factoring, however. Those are a little more interesting. There are chapters in the description if you want to skip around the problems in the video. Beginning with 30x to the 6 divided by 45x to the 3rd. The idea behind simplifying rational expressions is that we need to find factors common to both the numerator and denominator, and then we can cancel them out because common factors divide to one and one doesn't do anything. In this case, we might notice that 30 and 45 both have a factor of five. I could write 30 as five times six, and I could write 45 as five times nine. So we see those fives are going to cancel out. As far as the x's go, x to the six has three factors of three in it. It's x to the third times x to the third, right? Those multiply to give you x to the sixth. In the denominator, of course, we have an x to the third, and we could cancel that out with one of the x to the thirds in the numerator. So if we cancel out the fives, again, what really is going on there is it's five divided by five, which is one, and one times anything doesn't change it, so we can just ignore it. And that leaves the six divided by nine, and then we can cancel out some x to the thirds, and that just leaves an x to the third in the numerator. Really, to simplify x to the sixth over x to the third, it's just a basic exponent rule, which says we need to subtract the exponents when we're dividing common bases. It's x to the six minus three, which is the same as x to the three. You'll see it again in other examples. Now we're not quite done because six and nine also have a common factor. We could write six as three times two, we still have x to the third in the numerator. And we could write 9 as 3 times 3. Clearly, we can cancel out another factor of 3. So our fully simplified expression is 2x to the third divided by 3. For the numbers like 30 and 45, we just need to look for common factors we can cancel out. For the variables, as long as they have the same base, in this case they both have a base of x, you can just subtract the exponents. 6 minus 3 gave us this exponent of 3. Here's the next one. 2x squared plus 6x divided by 4x plus 12. A little bit different from the first example, but the idea is still pretty similar. We're trying to find a factor common to the numerator and denominator. If we look at the numerator, we might notice that both terms have a factor of 2x. I can pull 2x out of the numerator, and that leaves x plus 3 inside. You can see if we distributed the 2x through those parentheses, we would get back to 2x squared plus 6x. In the denominator, both terms have a factor of 4 in common. So I could pull out a 4, and that would leave x, because 4 times x gives you the 4x, plus 3, because 4 times 3 gives us the 12. Now we can see the common factor that was hiding. There's an x plus 3 in the top and bottom, and we can cancel those out. That gets us to 2x divided by 4, and of course we can go one step further, because the 2 and the 4 cancel out to just leave one factor of 2 in the denominator, because 2 over 4 is a half. So our final answer is x over 2. This is called a rational function, because it's the division of two polynomials. When you've got a polynomial, you've got to see if you can factor it. Once you do, you might have some factors in the top and bottom that you can cancel out. Next example, x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. This is a similar problem. We just need to factor the numerator and denominator. In this case, you've got to recognize the numerator is a difference of squares. So we can use a difference of squares factorization. x squared minus 9, which is 3 squared. So to factor that, we do x minus 3, x plus 3. The x times x would give us the x squared, the negative 3 times 3 would give us the minus 9, and because the signs are opposite, minus and plus, the middle terms would cancel out. That's how you factor a difference of squares. As far as the denominator goes, let's set up the factorization. It's going to be x plus something times x plus something. We need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. 6 and 1 multiply to 6, but they add to 7. 
3 and 2 multiply to 6, and they add to 5. So 3 and 2 are the right choice for our factorization, x plus 3, x plus 2. Now you can see there's a common factor of x plus 3 in the numerator and denominator. We can cancel those. After canceling the x plus 3s, we're left with our final answer, x minus 3 divided by x plus 2. And there's nothing else we can do here. In the previous example, we just had to pull out a single term from each polynomial. But you can see the factoring is occasionally a little more difficult. This next one is cute x minus 4 divided by 4 minus x. They look so close, and they are so close. We can do some cancellation here. You just have to realize that one of these expressions is the negative of the other. This is like a negative 2 divided by 2 situation. Obviously, you could cancel these, and you would get negative 1. This situation is very similar. Instead of negative x in the numerator, we have positive x. Instead of positive 4, in the numerator, we have negative 4. They're just opposites. So the idea is basically that we pull out a negative. Then, in the numerator, we would need to put 4 minus x. Because then, if we distributed this negative back through the parentheses, we would get the negative 4, and we would get the positive x. So we just pulled a negative out of that binomial in the numerator. And now we can see that we'll be able to cancel with the binomial in the denominator. 4 minus x, 4 minus x, they cancel out and just leave negative 1. Next example, 35x to the 7, y to the 5th, divided by 21x to the 4th, y to the 2nd. This is a lot like the first problem we did, we just have two variables now. But the idea is super similar. Again, looking at the numbers, we want to find common factors. 35 and 21 both have a factor of 7. I could write 35 as 7 times 5, and I could write 21 as 7 times 3. With the variables, like I said, we're just using the exponent rule here. x to the 7 divided by x to the 4 requires us to just subtract the exponents. That leaves x to the 3 in the denominator. 4 of the factors of x got canceled out, and that leaves 3 behind. Similarly with the y's, we just do 5 minus 2, which leaves y to the third power in the numerator. Then all that's left for us to do is cancel the 7's, and that leaves 5x to the third, y to the third, divided by 3. And there's no further simplification we can do. As a quick side note, if you had a situation like this, where subtracting gives you a negative power, so we could subtract the 2 and the 5 here, canceling out those y's, but that leaves us with y to the negative 3 third, you can just write that in the denominator as a positive power. That's 1 over y to the third. That's what that negative power means. You can get the same result by just subtracting the 2 down to the denominator instead of subtracting the 5 up to the numerator. Generally, we just want to keep our exponents positive. Here's our next example. Let's see what factors we can find. In the numerator, I notice both terms have a factor of 6x. If we pull out 6x, that leaves x minus 4. In the denominator, both terms have a factor of 3. So we can pull out a 3, which leaves 4 minus x. Now, these don't look quite the same, but it's just like that situation we mentioned before. The numerator factor here, x minus 4, is the negative of the factor in the denominator. Also, the 6 and the 3 will cancel out to just leave a factor of 2 in the numerator. We'll also pull out a negative from the numerator in order to swap those. So we have a negative, we have the 2, which comes from the 6 over 3. We still have this x. And then since we pulled out this negative, the x minus 4 becomes 4 minus x. And now that matches up very well with the 4 minus x in the denominator. The 3 is gone because remember, we did 6 divided by 3 to get that 2. And again, notice how if we were to multiply this negative back through the parentheses, the 4 would become negative again, and the negative x would become positive. So these are the same, just written differently. But when we write it this way, we see that we can cancel those 4 minus x's, getting our final answer of negative 2x. This next problem is similar to the previous one. We're just trying to look for factors in the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, we can factor 4 out of both terms, leaving 7 minus x. In the denominator, we can also factor a 7 out, which is going to leave x 
minus 7. And you can see we have that sort of negative situation going on again. 7 minus x is the negative of x minus 7. The 4 and the 7 will not be able to simplify at all because they don't have any common factors. But if we pull out a negative in the numerator, that's going to switch 7 minus x to x minus 7. And that's divided by, in the denominator, 7 multiplied by x minus 7. Now we can cancel out those x minus 7s, which leaves our final answer of negative 4 divided by 7. Here's another problem where we have a trinomial to factor, so let's go ahead and give that a try. In the numerator, we're going to have x plus something multiplied by x plus something. In the denominator, we can factor a 2 out of both terms, so let's just do that. That's going to leave x squared minus 16. And now let's bring our attention back to the numerator. We need two numbers that will multiply to 20 and add to negative 9. 5 and 4 multiply to 20, but they add to positive 9. But if we make them both negative, negative 5 times negative 4 multiplies to positive 20, and it adds to negative 9. So that's the correct factorization, x minus 5 and x minus 4. Now, there's no cancellation jumping out at us right now. We have to go one more step and notice in the denominator, x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares, so we can factor that further. So in the denominator, we have 2, and then we factor the difference of squares. We have the square of x and the square of 4. So to factor that, we do x minus 4 and x plus 4. And now we can see the x minus 4s will cancel out. And that gives us our final answer of x minus 5 divided by 2 times x plus 4. Here's our last problem. It's pretty similar to the previous one if you want to give this one a try. Let's begin by trying to factor the numerator. It's a trinomial, but it's a little bit different than the previous one because the leading coefficient is not 1. So x and x is not going to work. We're going to have to try 3x and x so that they multiply to give us the 3x squared. Now again, we need numbers that multiply to negative 8, but it's not as simple as having them add to 10 because the leading coefficient isn't 1, so it doesn't work that way anymore. To multiply to negative 8, we might consider trying negative 4 and positive 2. It's really just guessing and checking where you put these things. We're just trying to find something that works. 2 times negative 4 does give us the negative 8, of course, but we have to check that the term in the middle works as well. To do that, we have to look at what's going to happen with the multiplication. We would get 2 times x, and then we would get 3x times negative 4, which is negative 12x. Those add to negative 10x. That's almost what we want, it just has the wrong sign. So we can actually fix that if we just flip the signs. So instead of having plus 2 and minus 4, we'll have minus 2 and plus 4. That would give us 12x minus 2x, which gives the 10x as desired. In the denominator, we actually again have a difference of squares. 9x squared is the square of 3x. 4, of course, is the square of 2. So to factor that, we do 3x minus 2 multiplied by 3x plus 2. And we can see we can cancel the 3x minus 2s to get our final answer, x plus 4 divided by 3x plus 2. And that's how you simplify rational expressions. As you can tell, the key skills are being able to factor numbers and being able to factor polynomials. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check the description for links to other algebra lessons and my algebra playlists. Thanks for watching.